Hey guys, it's Pelican here and welcome to my Maxsock PvP build video for the upcoming Revstone DLC as well as the current patch. I've been running this build for most of Mudmire and I'll still be running the exact same setup next patch because not much has changed and I feel that there isn't a need to rework what I'm currently running. This build is very hard to kill, it has very good sustain as well as damage both in terms of burst and pressure and it also has a uh, good crowd control because we can use our pets for line of sight and I'll be going through more of that later in the video so without further ado, let's get into the build alright firstly I'll be going through my gear setup I'm running 5 piece necropotence, 2 piece blood spawn, 5 piece leech on my back bar only and on my front bar I'm running the master's inferno I'm running all in pen on my armor and all tri stack glyphs except for one small piece which I run max magicka and on my jewelry I'm running one protective, one arcane and one triune and for the enchantments I'm running two spell damage and one mech recovery on my front bar I'm running a shock damage enchantment and sharpen trait and on my sword and board bar for my one hand I'm running defending and absorb stem and on my shield, I'm running in pen and Max Magicka. I'm running Necropotence for a lot of Max Magicka, which is very useful for a Max Sword because our damage shields and pet only scale from his stats and not spell damage. Stacking Max Magicka will increase your damage, your defense, as well as your sustain. This is easily one of the best sets to run on Max Sword as long as you have a pet to keep it active. For my monster set, I'm running Blood Spawn, which is in my opinion, the best monster set for outnumbered PvP, no matter what class you are on. This set will give you some stem recovery, which is always useful, and when it procs, it will give you a lot of resistance, which can potentially save you from a burst. With Blood Spawn and Bounce Up, I will have as much resistance, if not more, than most heavy armor builds, even though I'm in light. The ultimate recovery is also very useful for our build because I'm running Storm Atrona and this will let me keep Storm Atro up for the majority of the fight. Now I know a lot of people like to run Trudan for Max Sword because it lets them drop Bounder Storm but uh, in my opinion Blood Spawn is a better choice. If you have not tried Blood Spawn before I highly recommend it. It is very strong when outnumbered and in fact I think it can be even stronger than some 5 piece bonuses. For my sustain, I'm running Shroud of the Leech, which is a wonderful set because we only need it on one bar to get its full effect. One major downside of this uh, set is that you have to farm for its weapons. It's a dungeon set, can be found in Creep of Hearts. And this might take a while because in this case, we need a shield as well as a one hand. So an alternative for Leech would be Armor Master, which is a crafted set. But uh, I think that uh, Armor Master isn't really that good because we already have enough defense with uh, Blood Spawn and you have to sacrifice a lot of damage for the missing Magicka recovery from not running Leech. On my front bar, I'm running Master Inferno and this will basically convert our Flame Reach into a Spammable. So we have a Spammable and a Crowd Control both in one skill. This will, this will let us save some bar space and you can get this from the uh, Dragon Star Arena. If you do not have a Flame Staff, you can also run a uh, Lightning Staff. I think it's also just as effective. You will lose some damage on your single target skills but you will also have a higher uptime of minor vulnerability because your Shock Reach can proc it. Do take note that uh, Light Attacks do not proc status effects. Now I'll be going through why I run certain traits and enchantments. I'm running lots of impen because it's a very effective trait. Each piece gives you about 3.9% mitigation to crit damage. And I also play in a CP campaign where most of my damage taken is crit. So crit damage is also usually the one that kills you no matter whether you're in CP or non-CP. And on top of that, uh, shields, damage shields and your pet also scale off crit resistance. I'm running a lot of tri stats to increase my max health and stem. The reason why I want more max health is because 
your damage shield strength is (uh) limited by your max health and max stem is important because I'm not running a sustain set like amberplasm so I will need to make up for that by having more max stem I'm running one protective for more resistance about 2.7% mitigation and I'm running triune as the same for the same reason as uh, tri stats for my stuff I'm running sharpen over nern hone because sharpen actually does more damage and it especially does more when the target has very high resistance and besides that I don't really need the spell damage from nern hone because I'm not using any healing skills you can also go infuse infuse is uh, just as strong if not better than sharpen because you get a higher a much higher minor vulnerability uptime in it. On my one hand, I'm running defending to increase my back bar resistance. This is very important because when I'm taking a lot of damage, I'll be stuck on my back bar since both of my wards are there. Paired with the resistance from shield as well as the additional impen trait, I'll be much more tanky on my back bar. I'm running Absorb Stem for more stem sustain when I do heavy attacks and I'm running Max Magicka on my shield to give me more Max Magicka on my back bar which uh, gives me a larger damage shield. Next up I'll be going through the skills. On my front bar I'm running Boundless Storm, Crystal Frags, Flame Reach, Haunting Curse, Pearl Light and Storm Atro. Boundless Storm will give us our mobility and resistance as well as do some damage. This damage can be used to pull people out of stealth or slowly drain their health and you can use the movement speed to either catch up to your opponents or run away from a larger group. Uh, in Wrath Stone, the cost of this skill has been reduced by a lot. It used to cost about 3.4k, now it only costs about 2.3k. So that's even more reason to run it. Crystal Frags will be our main burst. Uh, try to cast this skill only when the proc is up. If not, it will be it can be interrupted and it also cost a lot. Flame Rage will be our main spammable. This this hits as hard as uh, Force Pulse, and it also costs slightly less because we have Master Inferno, and it will also be our our main CC. We have Haunting Curse. You want to time this together with your Frax for a massive burst. And you can also use the other moth which lets your pet do more damage but personally i prefer this moth i find it much more versatile usually when i'm outnumbered i don't have much time to set up a burst so i will usually put haunting curse on someone first and play defensively until it's time for the second explosion that way i don't have to cast it again and i can instantly go into reach and frag and the curse will still go off Next up, I'll be going through and sharing some tips on how to use the pure light, which is very important if you want to play this build effectively. So first up, I'll be going through the damage mechanics. The pure light hits very hard, as you can see, the two tip is not far behind from our main spammable, and it hits quite often, about uh, once every two seconds. So if you want to do a lot of damage to your opponents, you must know how to use the targeting effectively. There are two ways to target enemies with the two light. The first is using heavy attacks. It doesn't have to be fully charged. A partial heavy attack will cause the two light to focus your target. The second way is to use the command pad control right here. And the way you use it is you have to hold this and light attack. So if I want to target uh, someone, I will hold the command pad button and press light attack that will cause the two light to target you can also use this to stop your two light from targeting instead of light attack just use block aside from dealing damage your pet will keep you alive without it you will lose the necro buff 8% hp will be gone and most importantly you will lose your only burst heal if your two light dies your main priority will to be resummon it you can take advantage of the CC immunity after you break free to recast it without being interrupted and you should always take advantage of line of sight because you will be very vulnerable when recasting the twilight. Fortunately, uh, during Merkmire as well as the upcoming Wrathstone DLC, 
pets have received quite a significant survivability buff as you can see here so they basically take no damage from AOEs or damage over times so unless someone is focusing them they should not die lastly for my ultimate I'm using the storm atro it does a decent AOE damage and stun when you deploy it so you can use that for as part of a burst or for crowd control but its main damage comes from its channel it does about 4k damage per second in 2 tip combining that with your twilight you will be doing a lot of pressure and that will make your that will make bursting your enemy much easier on top of that it also has a lot of health and it's also very big so you can sort of hide behind it and let it absorb some of the damage that you take on top of that because it's a pet it will also proc your necro and your expert summoner so if your twilight dies you can deploy your storm atro to help you while you are while you are resummoning your twilight and lastly it also has a very strong synergy this will be very useful when you are doing a 2vx and combined with the twilight heals which can be shared this will make this build a very good for very good for 2vxing on my back bar i'm running dark conversion streak harness harden twilight and temporal guard dark conversion will help out with my resource sustain and it also gives a decent heal i try to keep the resource over time up and i like to pair it with the unchained cp passive which basically makes your next conversion after you break free cost nothing next up i have streak a very important crowd control and mobility skill when you're outnumbered you constantly want to use this ability every eight seconds or so to stun your to stun your opponents and create some breathing room for yourself you can also use this to get behind cover for line of sight quickly catch up to opponents that are running away or kite larger groups into more manageable numbers just uh, take note not to streak too many times in a row as the cost will keep stacking next up is harness magicka a very powerful sustain skill if you are constantly getting spells thrown at you which is usually the case when you are outnumbered this skill will give you virtually unlimited sustain however if you are fighting a group that has little or no mech players you are better off not casting this skill because it costs a lot but it doesn't uh, ward as much as your main defense which is, which is hardened ward hardened ward has a 2 tip of about 13k in zero deal on this build and keep in mind that this isn't affected by debuffs like um, defile so harden ward you have to keep this skill up at all times and i always like to cast harden first before harness and if i'm taking too much damage i usually won't even cast harness because um the shield just isn't big enough to keep me alive in those situations and lastly we have two light again uh, just keep in mind to try and heal on the back bar with two light because as you can see the two tip is higher on the back bar and lastly for my ultimate i'm running the i'm running temporal guard which is the cg ultimate this is the best ultimate to slot back bar in my opinion because it gives you eight percent damage mitigation simply by being slotted and on top of that you also get a pretty good block passive which goes well with sword and board and i can and i, and I like to use this when when i anticipate a burst and on top of that the active ability is also very good if used correctly you can get some pretty clutch moments such as this with temporal guard and you can use it tactically to gain an edge over your opponents for example if you are if you have too many opponents on you you can streak multiple times in a row and they will all follow and then you temporal guard all the way back to where you originally started and go the other way next up i'll be going through my race i am still a high elf i think the high elf is still the best for max sort this patch the reason being elemental talent now it affects haunting curse and crystal flex which is your main burst and it previously doesn't here's a damage comparison of my flame witch and crystal flex before and after the racial changes as you can see this passive is clearly been buffed 
However, um, for the second passive, it's a bit of a nerf. I lost about 1k max magicka, but this isn't too big of an issue because we have more damage to make up for this. And lastly, the sustain changes. I think that this is still a very good passive. I might lose a tiny bit of magicka sustain, especially when my leech procs, but overall I like this change. And the damage mitigation is also good because we are using conversion and it will also help when you are resummoning your pet. If you don't want to go high elf, you can also go Breton if you feel like you really need the sustain. But overall, I think high elf is still the best. For my Mundus, I'm running the Mage for more Max Magicka. And for my food, I'm running the tri step food. For my potions, I'm running the Essence of Spell Power to give me sustain and damage. And I also have the Essence of Detection. And these are very useful when you have a Night Blade nearby that constantly spams Cloak. On top of that, uh, I make sure to have my Undaunted passives. We are running 5 Light 1, Medium 1, Heavy. And other than that, make sure you have all your passives, including your Alchemy passives and your Alliance War passives. Lastly, I'll be going through my CP setup. This is just what I feel works best for me. You should change it in order to suit your own playstyle more. Firstly, I'll be going through my blue tree. Now my red tree. You will want this passive and this will give you a lot of passive healing. Unchain for your dark conversion. I'm running one Siphoner because it gives Templars an additional thing to purge. And that's all for my CP. So that's all for the build video. I wish you guys great success in the upcoming patch. Thank you for watching and if you have any questions, uh, do let me know in the comments and I'll see you in the next video.